the medical profession had said to me, you're going to be in a wheelchair by the time you're 40. Your knees are a mess. Your back's, there's not a lot we can do with it. Um, and that's just the way it is. OK, so I carried on popping pills and believing what they said, going to church, people praying for me for, for some more. And in the end, to be perfectly honest, I started shying away from people praying for me. And I even stopped praying for myself because I thought, well, if this is God's will, why am I praying to God to stop it? I grew up um, as an only child. Uh, my parents were great. My dad, unfortunately, was an alcoholic. Um, so that led me to being very self-sufficient. So I kind of became a bit of a joker, a bit of a talker, a bit of a centre of attention sort of dude, really. I became a bodybuilder. I was working out that kind of scene in the 80s with a nice bleached white Mohican and, you know, kind of these big no-necked sort of dudes. And uh, I was a doorman at a nightclub and uh, worked in pubs and bars basically dealing with, with door security. Uh, through doing that and through keeping myself in shape, I ended up getting a call from a friend who was um, uh, in a, a male review show. I ended up um, auditioning for a British version of, of, of the Chippendales um, called the London Knights. And before you knew it, I was off touring the world, stripping. Through that, I got into modeling and TV work and. Um, uh, I went on to be a stunt man, uh, a stunt extra in the movie industry and I met a guy who was a producer for Playboy TV. He offered me my, my own series on Playboy TV so within just, just being from one place to this place to that place and before you know it, a few months later I'm shooting my own series on, on cable TV. So I was doing this show and we got commissioned to do a, a second series, it was well received. Uh, and I was going to get my hair cut. My hairdresser, who'd been a friend since I was uh, uh, 14, 15, um, her best friend was uh, a lady called Jacqueline. And I went to have my hair cut, and there was this kind of cute, cute chick there, Jacqueline, and I was looking at her and thinking, mm, she's nice. Yeah, when I first met Richard, I was very attracted to him. I thought he was very gorgeous. Um, but at that time in my life, I was about a year into my walk with Jesus. So uh, I was at that point really trying to stay with what God wanted for my life. Got, got the haircut and we were just chatting and it just, just this little kind of spark went off. When you fall in love for real, you, you can't stop it. I literally had to wake up and give every day to God at that stage, which I was doing anyway, but, but I didn't want it to finish, but I, I kind of thought that it couldn't be right because of where he was at. I just couldn't stop thinking about it, and I just wanted to be with her all the time, and, I, and the thought of doing what I was doing prior just sickened me. I didn't want to do it anymore. So um, I called up Playboy TV and I said, look, um, I, I don't want to do it anymore. Bearing in mind we were about to film a new series and they said, what? You, you can't just not do it. You're like the, the star of the show. I said, I, I really, I just don't want to do it anymore. And they said, don't tell us you've gone and fallen in love. I hadn't said anything to them. They said, don't tell us you've gone and fallen in love. I said, yeah, I have. And they said, you'll be telling us you've become a Christian next. Can you believe that? <laughs> to feel that forgiven is to feel that loved. So there was obviously going to be the, the issue of, wow, I don't really want to know about what he's done and what he's been doing. My slate has been wiped clean. I, can't, I just trusted God. I gave every day to God. Uh, Jacqueline was doing this Alpha course and, and, and she would come back from this, this uh, you know, being with, with Christians and being, speaking about God and learning about the Bible. And she'd come back and she was just light on her feet and glowing and, and you know, just, just different, you know, something real special going on. Um, and 
On the, I think it's about the 10th week of this course, they have a day they call the Alpha Away Day, or the Holy Spirit Day, they call it. I remember that day going to work. I said to Richard, you know, it's church, these people are fine. If you say, I'm not having a good time, I'm not enjoying myself, you don't have to pretend, you can be honest. You can say, you know, I'm going, thanks very much, bye. And that was really what I expected him to do. And I was used to going in a room and kind of holding court and regaling them with stories of all the rich and famous people that I used to party with and, you know, just talk about me, basically, all the time. Have you guessed? <laughs> and uh, they were just chatting. I told them uh, about me very briefly and they said, how does that make you feel? No one had ever asked me how it made me feel. I was like, well, I don't know. I just, just do it, that's what I do. I've never really thought, oh, I feel great, do I? And then these little questions. And we got to the end of the day and uh, they said, um, okay, uh, what we like to do is we like to, to, to ask the Holy Spirit to, to come. And there was a girl there, Frances Dowd, her name is, and she got up and she played the guitar. The guy that was running the whole scene, he said, you know, some of us like to put our arms out and, and ask the Holy Spirit to, to, to come into our lives, you know, it's like receiving a gift. So I stood there and I put my hands out and I closed my eyes. I said, okay, God, I've had a good time. If you really exist, show me now. And uh, all I can say is if, if you truly want to see God, he won't let you down and he will come to you in a way that's appropriate for you. The way God came to me was it felt as though he reached inside me, took hold of my insides and shook them to pieces. He just shook me and shook me and shook me and shook me. And it wasn't a weird thing, it wasn't a scary thing. It was, for me, I needed to be shaken. I needed to be shown that God was tangible and real. And I learned that day that the Bible is a true and factual historical account of the life of Jesus Christ who is our Lord and is our Saviour and the truth is in that Bible and the curate came along and he put his hand on me and he started speaking in tongues and there were people all around me there were people I had my eyes closed I had, I had tears rolling down my cheeks and there were people falling off chairs there were people laughing there were people crying but it it wasn't weird and it wasn't scary it was it was it was fantastic. I didn't know he was going to have a, a huge encounter with God. I, I, I don't say there was a change overnight, but it, it, it was pretty drastic. It was, you know, he, he did change. He, he said, I'm not doing certain things. He would say, I'm not doing that anymore. I've made a decision. This isn't happening anymore. That's not happening anymore. And so, you know, we, we, we got to a stage where we both had had sort of clean sweeps. And that was that. He asked me to marry him. We had a little girl in the year 2000, Erin. And it was sort of the early stages of his Christian walk when everything started to go wrong for him physically. I started going to a local Anglican church. I, I mentioned before that my dad was an alcoholic and I, I was kind of like the, the man of the family. And I got a call from my nan saying she hadn't been able to get hold of my dad and I drove around there and I could smell burning coming from my dad's flat. Um, and I was calling through the letterbox and he wasn't answering. So I kicked the door down and I went in and there was my dad lying out on the kitchen floor with a, a pan on the, on the stove that was just, you know, burning away. So I went in, I sorted that out. Now my dad is not a small man. He's a, he's a big, big, big guy. And uh, I was trying to get him up and he was just comatose on the floor. And uh, in retrospect, I should have left him there. But I picked him up to put him on his bed and I popped my back. I just felt my back go, my lower back. I was like, wow. Uh, next day, I couldn't walk. It didn't go away. It got worse and it got worse. And there were things like um, he couldn't hold Erin for long. He couldn't lift Erin. Uh, we'd have like days out where we'd go so far, we'd get so far throughout the day, and then he'd have to lie down wherever he was. He couldn't sit on chairs. 
Uh, driving could be uncomfortable. I was having to wear a body corset just to get about. Um, I had crutches with me in case my back just popped. So he was still going to work, still being a fantastic dad, a responsible person. Back was terrible. Went to see all the specialists, went to see the doctors. We spent a lot of money, a lot of time having everything done that they could possibly do to my spine. Um, over a period of time, the, the vertebrae were just rubbing together. Um, when I had, had some MRI scans, they discovered that I actually had, um, I was told I had spina bifida. I had a deformed base to my spine anyway, so all my life I'd had this weakness. And bearing in mind, during all this time, I was going to church, going to Bible study groups, and having very, very, very well-meaning and kind and lovely people pray for me and saying, Oh, Father God, Richard is a good man. Please heal him, Lord. Please heal him. He doesn't deserve this, Lord. Heal him, Lord. If it be your will, Father, heal him. Deep down, I kind of knew that it wasn't God's will, but that wasn't really what we were hearing. I never got healed. In fact, I got worse and worse and worse. I was taking diazepam daily, uh, cocodamol daily, Voltarol daily, and anything else I could get down my neck I was taking daily. I would drink a can of strong cider as well, just, just, to, just to, you know, numb the pain. And throughout it all, I still carried on. There was this idea that if you were sick, that it was God's will, that, that um, as Richard was saying, that he had such a huge personality and that, you know, this was what was keeping him tamed. The, uh, the medical profession had said to me, you're going to be in a wheelchair by the time you're 40. Your knees are a mess. Your back's, there's not a lot we can do with it. Um, and that's just the way it is. Okay, so I carried on popping pills and believing what they said, going to church, people praying for me for, for some more. And in the end, to be perfectly honest, I started shying away from people praying for me. And I even stopped praying for myself because I thought, well, if this is God's will, why am I praying to God to stop it? Because obviously that's what it is. And I, you know, that's how far gone I was in this kind of church doctrinal confusion about who our loving father is. So, <laughs> all this is going on. And then I woke up and I had this mad heart situation going on. My heart was just pounding out of my chest and uh, and then just stopping and then pounding and so I couldn't breathe and uh, it, it subsequently it turned out that I had a condition called atrial fibrillation. I remember getting there and seeing him wired up was awful uh, that was that was the first time and it, it, anyway this this happened a few times and we didn't know what was happening. So now I'm on more medication, so I'm taking the medication for my back, I'm now taking warfarin to thin my blood so I don't get a blood clot, which will kill me. That's just what they said. Out of those eight years, the six years was back, and then the, the final two years was the heart as well, and then the arthritis in my wrists came on. I, I did still trust God somewhere, I must have done, because it was that day that the God Channel popped up onto my telly, we didn't subscribe to the God Channel, the God Channel just arrived. Andrew was the, the, the first uh, person I saw. And there was this weird talking Texan preacher dude on there. I heard what he was saying and, and some scripture came up with what he was saying and he talked about that piece of scripture which I thought was awesome. And I thought, why don't we hear this kind of thing in church? And why don't we have scripture and then speak about scripture? Why do we have what we think about that piece of scripture as our sermons? She just got hooked and she listened. And when I came out, she said, oh, you've got to hear this, this guy, you know, this is great. So we started uh, listening to, to Andrew Womack on the, on the God Channel. And Andrew was talking about this same God that loved us. and. Uh, talking about the authority that we had and that how we, you know, our healing was our healing and it was a gift for us and all this stuff that was just, just affirming and, and, and the truth and, you know, the Bible says know the truth and it will set you free and we were being set free by this. We found out he was going to be at the hotel in London um, and we went. I went there expecting one thing and that was to be healed. And we listened to the praise and worship, and Andrew came out and he said, um, he said, right, 
who's come here today to see God move? And everyone's going, yeah! He said, well, you're too late. He's already done it, 2,000 years ago. And we were like, uh-huh. And it was, it was just, I mean, I felt kind of kicked in the face, but, but, but drawn straight in. He's already done it. Everything he said was about healing and our authority and how we need to speak to our, our mountain and you know all this scripture that just, just poured out of him and, and spoke volumes to me. When Richard went running down to the front for his healing at the end of the meeting, well, I just stood drop jaw because we'd not been to anything like this before. We'd, we'd, church wasn't like this. We People didn't go up to get healing at church. And I got up there and he had quite like a line of people on the stage, like guys from the college and other people to pray for. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get Andrew to pray for me. I'm going to get Andrew to pray for me. And I got, I was next in the queue. And then this other guy went, OK, over here. So, oh, OK. So it wasn't Andrew. And I went over and it was, um, it was Charlie, Charlie LeBlanc. So I was like, oh. Charlie the block, and he said, "Okay, you know what's uh, what's the problem? What do you want to pray for?" I said, "Well, there's quite a few things, really." He said, uh, "Well, you're not going to make the, the the lights in heaven dim." Um, so I told him, and I said, "Well, I've got the atrial fibrillation, I've got the the bad back, I've got the arthritis. You know, can you do it?" Type thing, you know. And he said, "Well, you know, there's nothing too big for our God," and he just put his hand on my shoulder and he said, Father God, you know, we're standing here in agreement right now that you are Lord and we're going to bind up all this stuff. And he just rattled it off. And as he was doing it, I stood in agreement with him and I took on board that piece of scripture and it says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be in the midst. And I knew at that moment and I took my healing, my healing that was for me personally and I took it. And I went back and I sat down and I still had pain I still had the swelling in, in my back, but in my heart, something had changed. My heart was right, and I was a change. I knew in my heart, although the exterior physical feeling was there, inside I knew I was different. And my heart wasn't fluttering, because my heart was all the time. I had a little, little tablet that I'd have to take if it got too bad, you know, just to settle things down. I just had a peace. He came back and he was sick and healed. And I said, well, you know, has your back stopped hurting? Because obviously it was hurting. He was sitting down for, I think it was probably an hour or more. I wasn't going to say, yeah, my back still really hurts actually, because the pain wasn't the truth. The pain was the distraction from the truth. The, the pain was something that was trying to lead me back down that path. You know, Satan just comes knocking. And he's like, no, that didn't work, that didn't work. But I just, it, 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 it couldn't get through to me because I was healed. I took my healing, I took the word, and it was planted inside me in my heart, and I knew that I was healed. And the external stuff was just distraction. So I remember waking up and seeing him on his side, and then he didn't kind of flip out onto the knees and stagger off and do all the stretches that he had to do. He kind of just got out of bed. I, I just got up out of bed. Um, praise God. And that was it. There was no jumping up and down and everything. It was just, hey, just get on with my life now. And that's it. I took my healing and I received it and I was done. Did a test on my heart. Just fine. I formed your heart. So I wasn't in a wheelchair by the time I was 40. Um, uh, also, something else the doctor said is quite likely that by the time I'm 42, I'll have to have a pacemaker fitted. Um, I don't have a pacemaker fitted. Um, I now live quite an active life. Um, I mountain bike. I'm in a cycle team called the TFBs, the Tadworth Fat Boys. Um, and we go all around the place doing mountain biking. My, my wife and my daughter and I, we go sailing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an active man. I can, I can get up and do things. I can, I can lift logs. I can lift machinery. I can do anything because I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Because when you've lived your life sick for a long time, you limit yourself. And in turn, you kind of limit God. And Andrew's got a great series, Don't Limit God, because we're the ones that do it. We're the ones that limit him. And now I've got no limitations on my life, nothing at all. If I want to 
go and jump on my mountain bike and go crazy down a mountainside, screaming like a girl, no offence girls, but I will. Nothing's going to stop me, nothing, nothing at all, because I've been given this life. And I was in the shower the other day, and for the first time ever, I thought, wow, I'm looking forward. Now, my daughter's only 12, but I'm looking forward to being a granddad. I, I can see that life. I can see the future. I can see a future living a life with Jesus. I have a new life, all because of that, because of that word, all because of that funny guy's voice. Andrew Womack coming on the God Channel and my wife being faithful and, and leading me to that and the word speaking to her and the word speaking to me and through his life and his spending his life studying the word and, and, and knowing God so well. It's through him that we have come to where we are today. There's nothing wrong with me at all. I'm completely healed. There's nothing wrong with me. What was wrong with me was my mind and my mind was sick because it, it, it was thinking the wrong things about God and about his word. And so I've been renewed in my mind through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is, that's the reality. That's real life. That's fantastic news.